just heard God's spiritual love language. And it was your singing. <laughs> you just spoke God's spiritual love language. He inhabits the praises of his people. Mm. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. What a privilege to be here together. And now, God, I pray that you would give me grace to share this next message in a way that has deep impact on every life here. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Okay. We are going to go quickly because I, I want to cover this, but it will not take very long. But it's a very important principle for spiritual leaders and pastors. Passion for humility. Do you remember we talked yesterday about how sin, how important it is to live a holy life. And how sin can bring a leader down. Another thing that can bring a leader down is pride. Pride comes before the fall. And we learn in 1 Peter chapter 5. God opposes the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. I don't know about you, but I want grace. I, I want to do whatever is necessary to get more grace. Humility brings grace. Pride is going to make God opposed to me. As a leader, as a pastor, I have a lot of other things opposed to me. I've got the world opposed to me, the devil opposed to me, my flesh is opposed to me. So I don't want God opposed to me. <laughs> I want his grace and his favor. And so the way to get his grace is to be humble. Now some people think that humility is like a personality trait. You either have it or you don't. You know, some people say, well, I'm just not a humble person. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It says, clothe yourselves with humility. In other words, humility is something we can choose. Why do many pastors struggle with pride? Because people look up to them. And this is not just pastors, it's anybody that's in spiritual leadership. Anyone that has influence on other people. We are given titles. I'm the Reverend Dr. David Holt. You better call me Dr. David. Because I'm the pastor. I'm the deacon. I'm, we, we, we like titles because they feed our ego. We have spiritual authority or influence on other people. God uses us to change lives and that's a good thing. 
But it can lead to pride if you think it was mostly because of you. Alright, now here's the here's the spiritual tension when it comes to pride and humility. God does use you. You are his hands and his feet. God wants you to influence other people. God wants you to be used to bring people to salvation. So we do play a part. But if we think it's all us, we will become prideful. It's God who ultimately changes lives. And if we realize that we play a part, but it's God who brings the fruit, then we'll stay humble. So as God uses you in others' lives, they will affirm you, they will thank you, they will appreciate you, and that's okay. As long as it doesn't make you to start thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. Romans 12 says, Do not think more highly of yourself than you should. People are drawn to you as God uses you. Most leaders and pastors are very gifted people. Because it takes a lot of gifts to do the ministry. But remember who gave you those abilities. As God gives growth and as the church grows, it can start going to your head. All of a sudden you say, whoa, look what I did. I got my own parking space now. I got people carrying my Bible for me. Alright, so let's talk about ingredients in humility. Here is what it takes to stay humble. <laughs> it is so important that you have an accurate view of God. So look at this passage. Humble yourself. This means it's a decision that you can do. Here's the key. Under the mighty hand of God. The key to humility is realizing how great God is. And how small you really are. How big he is. How small you are. And how he could move you out of the way in a moment. So it's an accurate view of God, but also an accurate view of self. Now, once again, there's a there's a spiritual tension here. 
There's a balance. It's not that I'm nothing. Okay, okay. okay, remember, God is big, we are small. But it doesn't mean that we are insignificant. And it doesn't mean that we amount to nothing. Again, you are his hands and his feet. You are the vessel that he wants to use. But the key is realizing that it's ultimately God who brings about the change and God who brings about the fruit. Right. This will help you a lot. Here is a great biblical definition of humility. It's realizing that apart from Christ, I can do nothing of any eternal value. While at the same time realizing I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you see the balance? See, if I go, if I go totally to the side of, I, I, I can do nothing, I can do nothing, apart from Christ, I can do nothing, so I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just a worm. I don't really amount to anything. I'm a nobody. See, that would be irresponsible. That would be imbalanced on this side. But what would be imbalanced on this side is saying, I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can preach really good sermons. And I can build a great church. See, that's equally imbalanced on this side. We walk in humility and when we do obey Christ and we do serve Christ. But we do it with total dependence on his power. And we rest in him being the one that produces the ultimate fruit. So, so let's say that I'm counseling a couple that's struggling in their marriage. And I go into that counseling session saying, God, please give me wisdom. Please give me discernment. Please show me to help me say the right thing. And then I do the best job I can in the power of the Holy Spirit when I meet with them. And then after the counseling session, I trust and rest in God being the one that heals the marriage. Amen. Amen. 
Third is an accurate view of others. I realize that only God can ultimately change another person. And so I trust Jesus as the ultimate life changer. Paul planted, Apollos watered, God causes the growth. The fourth ingredient is having a teachable heart. Being teachable, being a teachable heart. You realize there's always more you can learn. You never think you've arrived. I have a doctorate degree and I feel like I still know just a little bit about God. There is so much more I want to know. There's so much more I need to grow in in my relationship with God. And, and the more teachable you are, the more God will teach you. <laughs> Embrace your weaknesses. I did not say embrace your sin. A weakness is an area that you feel like you're just not very strong in. It's a feeling of not being adequate. And so that's an opportunity to exchange your weakness for God's power. God allowed Paul to have a thorn in the flesh. And that thorn in the flesh made him more dependent upon God. And it was an instrument to keep him humble. I believe we all have a thorn in the flesh. It might be a difficult marriage. It might be an area that you feel very weak in. But it keeps you dependent upon God. It, it keeps you humble. More practical advice. Remember that Jesus is the head of the church and not you. This, can, this helps me sleep at night as a senior pastor. This is actually how I sign my letters. Jesus is the head of the church, Pastor David Holt. <laughs> Realize that God could take away your ministry in a second if he chooses to. Realize that God could take away your ministry in a second if he chooses to. 
The Lord gives and the Lord takes away, the book of Job says. Three is delegate. This goes to the lady's question from Acts chapter 6. Give the ministry away. Let others be involved in ministry. Don't try to do everything. And, and if somebody does it better than you, don't be threatened by it. Rejoice in that. Because it's not about us, it's about Him. Amen. We are to build His kingdom and not our own kingdom. Learn to say no, don't try to do everything. This goes back to the Sabbath principle. Alright, here's an interesting one. We're almost done. Mm. Have a life outside of your ministry. Do fun things with your children. <laughs> you don't always have to be a pastor. Alright, these are some reason it's not coming up right. Uh I think we've done enough. Uh, let me just tell you one more. Don't compare yourself with others. One of the biggest robbers or stealers of joy in the ministry is comparing yourself to another ministry or another pastor or another church. Because the biggest problem with comparison it's never it's never healthy. Because if I compare myself with a ministry that is, say, smaller than mine, then I could become prideful in thinking I'm better than that ministry because my church is bigger. And if I compare myself with a ministry that's bigger than mine, then I will think, oh, our mind's not as important. So comparison is never a good thing. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter of our faith. As we live a life of humility. We unleash the grace of God. 
And we follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because Philippians chapter 2 says he humbled himself. By coming to earth. And laying down his life for you and me. And then God exalted him. So as we humble ourselves, we allow God to exalt us at the proper time. Father, in Jesus' name. I pray that we will live a life of humility and walking in your grace each day. God, I pray that we will be so dependent upon you and that we will focus more on the eternal than the temporal. For sometimes when we look at the temporal, we can be misled. God, I pray that we will rest and have joy in you being the one who ultimately changes lives. And so empower us to do our part. And then help us to rest in what you and only you can do. For the glory of Jesus. And the building of his kingdom. In his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Kare, just lift your hand and thank God for that. At least you have something in you. There is a deposit that has been put in you. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you for such a beautiful teaching. Thank you for such a revelation. We pray that Father, you ground these things into our lives. The Lord, they produce fruit for in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Together, we are going to do our last session. And when I look at you, I see you are all expectant. It is my prayer that God meets your expectations. And it's my prayer that God gives you even beyond your expectations. It's my prayer that God hides me under his glory that I only speak what he wants me to speak this evening. Why don't you lift up your hands and just love him for a moment as we go. Father, we are here for you. And you are here for us. You are passionate of us. And you rejoice in us. You celebrate our presence. And Lord, we celebrate your presence. And here we are, oh God. We are ready to receive again from you. Baptize us by your spirit. Fill us by your spirit. Revive us again. Renew us again. Holy Spirit, take over this congregation. Holy Spirit, refill us and refill us and refill us. That there may be an overflow in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, church. Amina Church. Amen, somebody. Amina. I told you my love language. I love to shout. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah.
I love to rejoice in the Lord. In our church, we learn, we laugh, we jump, we dance, we wish. We enjoy being in God's presence. The best place to be in is in the presence of God. No wonder David said one thing. One thing. No wonder Jesus even told Martha that one thing is to be on the feet of Jesus. So what I'm going to share is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Give me amplified. You have amplified Bible. 5.18 being filled with the Holy Spirit. Brethren, you cannot walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, serve God in the Spirit, unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot speak in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Should I repeat that? You cannot live. Walk. Walk. No serve God no in the spirit unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Neither can you walk and flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Gifts are just overflow. Yeah. Where is my... Uh -uh. You just get me this... That's bottles. I can use that. Let me start doing this. We're going to rush in the next moment. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus bought us yes, that we may be temples of the Holy Spirit. Pardon? Temples of the Holy Spirit. So any spirit in you is illegally residing in you. And today it has to get out. Any spirit residing in you which is not the Holy Spirit is illegally residing in you. That's one of the reasons why God fills us with the Holy Spirit. That all other spirits have to, to leave. Just help me. This bottle is full. But God is so passionate for us. He wants us to overflow. Jesus came to give us life yes, we are to and life in abundance. This is what God is so generous. This is overflow now. So ministry is a product of overflow. Gifts, gifts is overflow. So you cannot see the manifestation of these gifts unless you are filled and you are overflowing you people in us they are residents of gifts there, there is a lot of potential inside of us. There is a lot of treasure inside of us. But anything that came from the Lord can be magnified by God. So being filled with the Holy Spirit will magnify what is of God in you. 
and being filled with the Holy Spirit we destroy what is of the devil inside of us. So you cannot live a free life from the works of the evil one unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord deposit inside of you a deeper thirsty and a deeper hunger to live a life. Did you get the scripture? 5.18 Amplified by Boch Ephesians chapter 5. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm trying to build an introduction why you need to be filled and ever be filled with the Holy Spirit that the devil doesn't have even a way to, to fit. And preferred Bible said and do not do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but Eva 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 means continuously be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit Eric. So a victorious life which we have through Christ Jesus is enforced and manifest by, uh, uh, by living a life that is ever, ever steadily continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a call to all of us. It is a call to every person who is a believer, who is a new creature in Christ Jesus. To live a life that is filled and overflowing. No wonder David said in Psalms 23 that my cup overflows. He has anointed me and, and I, I overflow because of that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me whenever I go. Do you know why it falls you? It's because of this overflow because of this overflow it attracts God's goodness it attracts God's masses whenever you go do you know that what fills you will control you have you ever one day been filled with the anger and you find yourself that you cannot control yourself but anger is now driving you so God wants us to reach that point that we are filled with him that even if when you are speaking with somebody you just find yourself speaking words you never even planned and a, and a person just say God has spoken to me. Not only on parapet, but even when we are sitting at our homes, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, in just your conversation, you find yourself speaking the heart of God to that person. So it is not a choice. It's a man's thing for every believer. That every believer, if you are to add value to the kingdom of God. You cannot unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't advance the kingdom of God unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God and there is a God of this world. You cannot overcome him unless the God of heaven takes over. The God of this world is a spirit. Lucifer, the dragon, the ancient snake, 
But when he who comes from above fills you, then you trample over it. Why? Because you are filled with him from above. And what is from above will reign to that one from above. From what? From below. Here in Uganda, you usually hear people say, order from above. <laughs> you may take somebody to the police. <laughs> and the phone comes from above. They say, order from above. And they release him. You get it. Mm. One day I was rushing to the airport. And I happened when I was overtaking, I smashed into another car. <laughs> Thank God no one was affected. Then I rushed and continued with the ministry. I had a crusade in Kenya. So when I came back, they were waiting for me to take me to prison. <laughs> But somebody connected me with somebody from above. <laughs> and uh, an order came from above. They called it a file from that police station. Say order from above. So the Holy Spirit is from above. When he fills you, you will be a victim. You will be a victor. You will be so bold. You fear no demon. You fear no principality. You fear no forces of darkness. No wonder Peter, when he was filled, he could stand in the same state where he denied Christ. And he could preach Christ. Why? Because he was now filled with him. Him who is from above. He could not be intimidated. So people, you cannot even suffer for the sake of the name of the Lord. No, you cannot suffer for Christ. You cannot, you cannot be persecuted and endure the persecutions of ministry. Unless you are filled by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fills you, these people, they try to, to stop you preaching they try to put you in prison but the prison will not contain you you don't understand that many other times they could take Paul and stripe him beat him put him in prison but because he was filled with the Holy Spirit he was just rejoicing being in prison and he could witness even to those kings and to those people what? his strength was God from above you, were, you, you remember when they stoned Stephen as well because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When they were electing the deacons, they said, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. But today we have elders in church, ushers in church, pastors, who are not even filled back in the early church. Even to do anything in the church, you had to be filled. Serving food. You had to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The prerequisite to do anything in church. Even carrying water to the pastor. Even carrying a pastor's Bible. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because what, what fills you will influence whatever you do. Even 
what you touch. That's why Bob could give his handkerchief to people and they go and get healed. Because he was overfilled. Therefore, even that handkerchief he could touch on, they could have a transfer of the spirit. May the Lord fill us today. Uganda will be healed. May the Lord fill us today. Your family will be healed. May God fill us today. This city will be transformed. May God fill us today. Our generation will be healed. Amen. You cannot be faithful. It is not by mighty nor by power Zachariah 4, 6 nor by mighty nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord. I love that scripture. Nor by mighty nor by power but my spirit says the Lord. So when he he fills you. You never live below what God has called you to. You live to the fullness of your calling. You raise to the fullness of your calling. What? You cannot even be empowered by him unless he fills you first. Jesus, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness. Being filled is not being empowered. We take that second part maybe tomorrow. That's what they call being filled by the Holy Spirit. And then being empowered. Jesus, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, Ooh, he went into the wilderness. He came back when he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So you cannot go to the empowerment before you are Jesus believed to his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. But he told them, Go and wait. Empowerment is a product of waiting upon God. And then being filled is a gift from the Lord. But empowerment. You need to tell the longer in God's presence that He empowers you. He refuses and refuses you and refuses you and refuses. Amen. You see how how the how the shadows uh, how the shadow of Peter could heal the sick. He was living in the overflow. That everything he even where he could pass, you could put there, you could put somebody sick there and he gets healed. His shadow. It was not his shadow. The Holy Spirit had already captured his shadow. You remember Philip after preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch. Then the Holy Spirit captured him, grabbed him, and he found himself into another city. Those supernatural acts are coming again. In this end time, because God's glory is going to be greater than the early church. But it will happen to those who open up their hearts for God to fill them. When he fills you, he gives you speed. You cannot run with a horse when you are on foot. You cannot. You cannot. So if God fills the church with the Holy Spirit, the church will grow faster because no flesh will be glorified. It, 
It will all be about God. There will be no competition. It will all be about God. You, you, you see, if you study the book of us, you see how fast the church was growing. If I, I am to be given an opportunity to give another name for the book of Acts, I could say the book of the Holy Spirit. Those are acts of God. God the Holy Spirit. That many people were moved back to Jesus. By God himself, God the Holy Spirit. So God has called us. He has given us dreams. He has given us visions. Many prophecies have been made here. But we cannot enter into them unless we are filled by Him. Jesus. Yes. Many had been spoken about Him. That when he was filled after baptism, they started to see another side of him. And, and, he, and his name changed. They called him Jesus Christ. Jesus the anointed. So when God fills you, your, your influence will burst. So, I wrote down a number of things that will help us to get filled by the Holy Spirit as you prepare my Putin. These are some of the things that can help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one, Repent. Acts 2.38. Bless you. You are filled. <laughs> what is that? Put in. Hallelujah. Most of what Dr. David has been doing here. He has been helping us to live a life that is living daily, a life that is full of the Holy Spirit. This is milk. There is nothing divinity in here. <laughs> no witchcraft here. It is not that holy water used to know. <laughs> we are using this to help you learn something. That when you give your life to Jesus, Jesus come in your life by the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. That's why the day you gave your life to Jesus you were filled with joy they call that the joy of the Holy Spirit they call it the joy of the Holy Spirit you see your life was like this when the Holy Spirit came in now he transforms you that is what Dr. David was saying no transformation you can be in a church you can serve God for decades and for years when there is nothing changing in your life hallelujah mm. you see when he comes in he's now the one who brings in that life of godliness sanctification purity transformation of your life transformation of your desires transformation of your focus transformation of your goal you see something that had, or had only one color white it is now changing into brown that is what the Holy Spirit does in us 
when he comes in us he is the one who convicts us repent, 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 repent and he is the one who gives us the strength to turn away from our sins and he is the one who judges the God of this world he is the one who assures us the righteousness of God and by doing that you get a new mind you see yourself differently you see yourself in Christ Jesus as somebody new then even your confession changes because you say I am a friend of God I am a child of God I am the beloved one of God I am a precious possession of God I am, I am that righteousness of Christ and then he is the one who brings the visions and the dreams of God in our lives then you get to know you are called to preach you are called to sing you are called to this you see he is refocusing you giving you a godly direction and he transforms your desires your dreams to the light of God. So he helps us to live a godly life. Put it down for some time as, as we go. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Oh God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Amen. So repentance, Peter, they were asking him, Peter, the, the Peter we knew. <laughs> He's now a different man. This is not the coward we knew. This is not the one who denied Jesus. And Peter said, No. You also repent. Change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner self instead of rejecting it. And be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sin from your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you shall receive do you know the why today the church is very dry because there is no longer repentance in the church for that's when we are growing up in the Lord every service every prayer meeting we could start by repenting we, we could have a pastor who could come and share for a few minutes and he leads you in repentance but today receive touch supernatural grace have six wife we are living in the grace of God go around about children living in the grace of God that quenches the Holy Spirit he, he doesn't go but you see if you give time this chuckle will come down chocolate that is quenching the Holy Spirit is in you but it is not rising to overflow but repentance you are releasing him you, you are doing what pleases God that's why David started by saying oh God he started by repenting and then he said cast me not away from your presence take not your Holy Spirit from me he rises to overflow in your life as you continuously heed to the conviction and you repent and you ask him to empower you to walk out of sin Amen Repentance 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 and sin is falling away from the glory of God the standard of